So the WBA have made it official. They have ordered Joshua Boatze to fight Dan Aziz in a final eliminator. The winner gets a shot at Dimitri Bivol. Now, Joshua Boatze and Dan Aziz have been number one and number two in the WBA light heavyweight rankings for quite a while now. So this doesn't come as any kind of surprise to me. The interesting thing here is that according to, I think Eddie Hearn said this, I'm not sure if Frank Smith said it as well, but according to them, Dan Aziz is actually a free agent, or they've heard he might be a free agent. And Eddie Hearn suggested that he might give Dan Aziz a straight shot at Dimitri Bivol. Now, why would Eddie Hearn do that, other than to try and mess up the plans of Joshua Boatze and mess up the plans of his promoter, Ben Shalom? Because it's not like Dan Aziz is exactly hot property in British boxing. Yeah, he's a good fighter. He's a bit of a fan favorite on some of the smaller shows and stuff like that. But nobody looks at Dan Aziz and thinks, oh, this guy is an absolute world beater. We must get him a world title shot as soon as possible. People don't look at him that way. They think, okay, yeah, put him in there against Boatsy. That'll be a nice domestic fight. Put him in there against Yard. He'll probably lose both, but he'll give a good account of himself, right? So again, for Eddie Hearn to say that he might give Dan Aziz a straight crack at Dimitri Bivol, it's as if he's trying to spite Joshua Boatsy. And we've seen Eddie Hearn be spiteful in the Lawrence O'Colley situation. So he definitely has that kind of thing in him. And it's kind of a shame because earlier on in Eddie Hearn's promotional career, he wasn't going down that path that Frank Warren has been going down for so many decades, where he gets all vindictive and whatnot. He seemed to be kind of easy come, easy go. He wasn't really trying to get back at people and stuff like that. But again, this to me would be a move to either get at his rival promoter in Ben Shalom, Sky and so on, or get at Josh Boatsy, or perhaps both. So let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. Will Eddie Hearn scupper the plans of Josh Boatsy and... Uh, uh, ben Shalom, excuse me, by just offering Dan Aziz, if he's a free agent, a straight crack at Dimitri Bivol. Because really and truly, Joshua Boatsy versus Bivol is a bigger fight. Everybody's going to make more money. So again, that's the fight to make. But because Boatsy no longer with Eddie Hearn, he's like, ah, forget about that. We'll just give Dan Aziz a straight shot. We're trying to spite Boatsy. He won't get an opportunity to fight Dimitri Bivol again. You see, because if Joshua Boatsy fights Dan Aziz in a final eliminator, he, and, and he wins, he becomes mandatory and he will actually get a better deal to fight Dimitri Bivol than the deal he was offered by Matchroom. Because remember, Matchroom offered Boatsy the Dimitri Bivol fight, but he had to stay on with Matchroom and DAZN for several more fights after that. And there was a rematch clause. As mandatory challenger, he wouldn't obviously be attached to Matchroom or DAZN at all. And there would be no rematch clause. If he went in there and beat Dimitri Bivol, he'd sail off into the sunset. Also, he was offered one million pounds by Matchroom to fight Dimitri Bivol. I think it was about one million. Well, with, uh, you know, now that he's with Sky, and if he becomes mandatory challenger, potentially he could make a lot more than that. If there's a purse bid between a boxer and uh, Dimitri Bivol's promoter, then the highest bidder would get the fight and Joshua Boatsy would get a guaranteed percentage as mandatory challenger. It varies between the different sanctioning bodies, but it's roughly around 30% for a mandatory challenger. That's what the sanctioning bodies set as the standard purse for a mandatory. So, you know, the challenger gets 30, the champion gets 70. So yeah, that potentially would be more than a million pounds for Joshua Boatsy. So it'd work out well for him. Let's see if this fight actually goes ahead. It's a fight that I like, I guess. I think it's a perfectly acceptable fight as a final eliminator. I don't have any issue with it. If it doesn't happen, maybe Boatsy tries to make the Anthony Yard fight, because that's obviously a much bigger fight. Um, but it's also a more dangerous fight, because personally, I think Joshua Boatsy beats Dan Aziz quite comfortably. I know he didn't impress a lot of people in his last outing, but I think he beats Dan Aziz. Maybe Dan Aziz will prove me wrong, but in my head, I'm thinking Joshua Boatsy sails through that quite easily. But with Anthony Yard, that's a much closer fight in my head than it used to be. I used to think that Joshua Boatsy had the edge in that one, a decisive edge. And even though Anthony Yard has lost a few times now, he lost to Lyndon Arthur, he lost to Sergei Kovalev, he lost to Artur Baturbiev, it's all experience. Yeah, Joshua Boatsy's never fought at that level. So again, even though Anthony Yard's been losing at championship level, he's still getting the rounds and he's still getting the experience. He still knows what it's like to be in there with fighters of that caliber. And that will stand him in good stead against Joshua Boatsy. So, you know, it's a risky one for Boatsy to fight Anthony Yard. Yeah, there's a lot of money in it, but you could also lose. Do you really want to risk 
losing or go in a fight where you have a serious chance of losing before you get that title shot, especially when you're on the verge of it. When you're right there on the doorstep, all you've got to do is beat Dan Aziz and you've got a mandatory shot. Now, if Dan Aziz is offered a crack at Dimitri Bivol, perhaps Joshua Boatsy fights in a final eliminator against somebody else. They can definitely do that. Yeah, he might have to wait a little bit longer, but I guess the uh, WBC, uh, excuse me, the WBA, it's not the WBC, the WBA, um, I'm not sure what their schedule's like for mandatories for Dimitri Bivol, but you know, some sanctioning bodies tend to expedite the mandatories quicker than others. The IBF normally are quite quick with their mandatories, although not in every case. Certainly not a heavyweight right now with Philip Pergovic waiting for his shot at Usyk. And I think I think G-Man was saying that in the uh, welterweight division, they haven't been the quickest as well. So yeah, there are exceptions, but generally the IBF are the quickest when it comes to enforcing mandatories. The WBA, I don't know, maybe they're dragging their heel, heels a little bit as well. Uh, we'll see what happens there. So let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments section below. Joshua Boatsy versus Dan Aziz is a fight that you like for the final eliminator. WBA light heavyweight. Is it a fight you think will happen or will Eddie Hearn come in and scupper the whole thing? <laughs> maybe some of you guys, like the fact that Eddie Hearn's going to come in and scupper it because some people really are fanboys of promoters. I'm just a fan of good fights. And some promoters go on a run where they put on consistently good fights and good shows and they make innovations in the sport of boxing. And Eddie Hearn was that guy for a long time. But when Eddie Hearn starts carrying on with nonsense and stuff that actually hurts boxing and hurts fighters, I'm going to call him out on it. And as far as I'm concerned, if he was to give Dan Aziz a straight crack, at Dimitri Bivol. I don't agree with it. Yeah, to me, that's messed up. And that's Eddie Hearn, you know, carrying on with shenanigans. That's the way I would see it. Let these two guys fight for the right to become mandatory. Again, if Hearn offers Dan Aziz enough money, <laughs> Dan Aziz is going to go straight to Bivol, I would imagine. Yeah, if he offers him a check, a number that's too big to refuse. So anyway, going around in circles now, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? Then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalogue of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high-quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called The Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.